Today, we learn about life of panda. The giant panda lives in a few mountain ranges in central China, mainly in Sichuan but also in neighboring Shaanxi and Gansu. As a result of farming, deforestation, and other development, the giant panda has been driven out of the lowland areas where it once lived and it is a conservation-reliant vulnerable species. A 2007 report showed 239 pandas living in captivity inside China and another 27 outside the country. As of December 2014, 49 giant pandas lived in captivity outside China, living in 18 zoos in 13 countries. Pandas will travel between different habitats if they need to so they can get the nutrients that they need and to balance their diet for reproduction. For six years, scientists studied six pandas tied with GPS collars at the Foping Reserve in the Kinling Mountains. They took note of their foraging and mating habits and analyzed samples of their food and feces. The pandas would move from the valleys into the Kinling Mountains and would only return to the valleys in autumn. During the summer months, bamboo shoots rich in protein are only available at higher altitudes, which causes low calcium rates in the pandas. During breeding season, the pandas would return to lower altitudes to eat bamboo leaves rich in calcium. Pandas communicate through vocalization and scent marking, such as clawing trees or spraying urine. They are able to climb and take shelter in hollow trees or rock crevices, but do not establish permanent dens. For this reason, pandas do not hibernate, which is similar to other subtropical mammals, and will instead move to elevations with warmer temperatures. Pandas rely primarily on spatial memory, rather than visual memory. Though the panda is often assumed to be docile, it has been known to attack humans, presumably out of irritation rather than aggression. Pandas have been known to cover themselves in horse manure to protect themselves against cold temperatures. Giant pandas reach sexual maturity between the ages of 4 and 8 and may be reproductive until age 20. The mating season is between March and May when a female goes into estrus, which lasts for two or three days and only occurs once a year. When mating the female is in a crouching, head down position as the male mounts her from behind. Copulation time ranges from 30 seconds to 5 minutes, but the male may mount her repeatedly to ensure successful fertilizations. The gestation period is somewhere between 9 to 5 and 160 days. The variability is due to the fact that the fertilized egg may linger in the reproductive system for a while before implanting on the uterine wall. When the cub is first born, it is pink, blind and toothless weighing only 90 to 130 kg a day. The limited energy input imposed on it by its diet has affected the panda's behavior. The giant panda tends to limit its social interactions and avoid steeply sloping terrain to limit its energy expenditures. The morphological characteristics of extinct relatives of the giant panda suggest that while the ancient giant panda was omnivorous 7 million years ago, in the past, pandas were thought to be rare and noble creatures. The Empress Dowager Bao was buried with a panda skull in her vault. The grandson of Emperor Taizong of Tang is said to have given Japan two pandas and a sheet of panda skin as a sign of goodwill. Unlike many other animals in ancient China, pandas were rarely thought to have medical uses. The few known uses include the Sichuan tribal people's use of panda, urine and up accidentally swallowed needles, and the use of panda pelts to control menstruation as described in the Qin Dynasty Encyclopedia Aria. The creature named Mo mentioned in some ancient books has been interpreted as giant panda. The dictionary Sichuan Owen, Eastern Han Dynasty, says that the Mo from Sichuan is bear-like, but yellow and black, although the older Arya describes Mo simply as a white leopard. The interpretation of the legendary fierce creature picks you, as referring to the giant panda is also common. Gifts of giant pandas to American and Japanese zoos formed an important part of the diplomacy of the People's Republic of China PRC in the 1970s, as it marked some of the first cultural exchanges between China and the West. This practice has been termed panda diplomacy. By 1984, however, pandas were no longer given as gifts. Instead, China began to offer pandas to other nations only on 10-year loans, under terms including a fee of up to US dollar $1 million per year, and a provision that any cubs born during the loan are the property of China. Since 1998, because of a WWF lawsuit, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service only allows a U.S. zoo to import a panda if the zoo can ensure that China will channel more than half of its loan fee into conservation efforts for the giant panda and its habitat. The giant panda is a vulnerable species, threatened by continued habitat loss and habitat fragmentation. 
and by a very low birth rate, both in the wild and in captivity. Its range is currently confined to a small portion on the western edge of its historical range, which stretched through southern and eastern China, northern Myanmar, and northern Vietnam. The giant panda has been a target of poaching by locals since ancient times and by foreigners since it was introduced to the West. Starting in the 1930, foreigners were unable to poach giant pandas in China because of the Second Sino-Japanese War and the Chinese Civil War, but pandas remained a source of soft furs for the locals. The population boom in China after 1949 created stress on the panda's habitat and the subsequent famines led to the increased hunting of wildlife, including pandas. During the Cultural Revolution, all studies and conservation activities on the pandas were stopped. In 2006, scientists reported that the number of pandas living in the wild may have been underestimated at about 1,000. Previous population surveys had used conventional methods to estimate the size of the wild panda population, but using a new method that analyzes DNA from panda droppings, scientists believed the wild population may be as large as 3,000. In 2006, there were 40 panda reserves in China, compared to just 13 reserves in 1998. As the species has been reclassified to vulnerable since 2016, the conservation efforts are thought to be working. Furthermore, in response to this reclassification, the State Forestry Administration of China announced that they would not accordingly lower the conservation level for panda and would instead reinforce the conservation efforts. Not all conservationists agree that the money spent on conserving pandas is well spent. Chris Packham has argued that the breeding of pandas in captivity is pointless because there is not enough habitat left to sustain them. Packham argues that the money spent on pandas would be better spent elsewhere and has said he would eat the last panda if I could have all the money we have spent on panda conservation put back on the table for me to do more sensible things with. He also quoted, the panda is possibly one of the grossest wastes of conservation money in the last half century, though he has apologized for upsetting people who like pandas. However, a 2015 paper found that the giant panda can serve as an umbrella species, as the preservation of their habitat also helps other endemic species in China, including 70% of the country's forest birds, 70% of mammals, and 31% of amphibians. In order to improve living and mating conditions for the fragmented populations of pandas, Nearly 70 natural reserves have been combined to form the Giant Panda National Park in 2020. With a size of 10,500 square miles, the park is roughly three times as large as Yellowstone National Park and incorporates the Walong National Nature Reserve. The state-owned Bank of China helped to enable the project with US dollar 1.5 billion. One major aim is to permanently keep the panda population stable enough to avoid a relapse to its former ek and red list endangered status. Especially small, isolated populations run the risk of inbreeding in smaller genetic variety, makes the individuals more vulnerable to various defects in genetic mutation, allowing a larger group of individuals to roam through a larger area, freely and choose from a greater variety of mates, helps to enrich genetic diversity of their offspring. Pandas have been kept in zoos as early as the Western Han Dynasty in China, where the writer Sima Zion grew noted that the panda was the most treasured animal in the emperor's garden of exotic animals in the capital Chang'an, present Xi'an. Not until the 1950 were pandas again recorded to have been exhibited in China zoos. Chai Chai at the London Zoo became very popular. This influenced the World Wildlife Fund to use a panda as its symbol. A 2006 New York Times article outlined the economics of keeping pandas which cost five times more than keeping the next most Expensive animal, an elephant. American zoos generally pay the Chinese government $1 million a year in fees as part of a typical 10-year contract. San Diego's contract with China was to expire in 2008, but got a five-year extension at about half of the previous yearly cost. The last contract with the Memphis Zoo in Memphis, Tennessee. And that's it. I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching.